security when I put my security inside of myself but instead of giving it to God when I put my security inside of myself what do I have insecurity and you'll become like Samson right putting your sanity inside of yourself insanity why did I say Samson was crazy Samson was out of his ever loving mind that's why I won't have two bills because you're like Jamie I'm, I'm telling you my mind is too much my mind is a terrible thing to waste I think one of them will waste it inside of me because my mind is too much for me to hold I gotta give it to God I don't think bipolar is incurable I, now that I, now I think about it now I think about it I have a chance to think about it I don't think bipolar is incurable I think you have to give it every day to God you have to give, not give it but give your mind every day to God as you give your mind every day to God, you are not taking responsibility for things that you are thinking, right? So I can have an empty, I'm telling y'all, sometimes I'm sitting here, yesterday I was sitting here, I was looking at this piece that's in front of me now, and I was like, hmm, I need a yellow blouse. When I'm just, I have an empty head, I really am thinking I need a yellow blouse. So if I got a yellow blouse, right, what would I think after that? Whatever. So I think the bipolar people, we, we need, we need, right, to, to especially give our minds over to God. And it's not that we will ever get healed from bipolar, because once you are diagnosed with bipolar 1, you will never get rid of that diagnosis. So it's not that you'll ever be healed from bipolar, but what you will be healed from is the stigma of calling yourself a bipolar, uh, a, 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 a bipolar shell, where bipolar can live inside of your body with your mind. Nothing lives inside of me. I am not a shell. I had a parasite before. Uh, being here, being in Maryland. I, I had a parasite, but anyway, let's let's leave that alone. But that's nasty when something takes care, of, takes over your body and becomes the host inside of you. That parasite almost killed me. I turned blue. I didn't sleep for two days. Everything hurt. I could not touch the bed. It was crazy. A parasite is a serious thing. When your mind becomes a parasite inside of you, when my mind becomes a parasite inside of me, then the problem is no longer me, but me. Right, I got two minds, not really, because the mind that houses the mind of world emotions. The way I got two minds, so you tell me not to be bipolar? No, everybody's bipolar. You got two minds, you are bipolar. You living at the end of two different poles, right? So you're crazy. There's something wrong with you. That's why they say everybody is on the spectrum. It's just where you lie. I said, Miss Linda, do you think I, I think I need to take the test? Do you think I should take it? She's like, no. I said, okay. <laughs> she got two minds. One of them tell her, come on the prayer call. The other one tell her, come on the prayer call and start trouble. Because you want attention. Come on the prayer call and do things to get attention. And I'm going to give you the attention you need. It may not be the attention you want, but I'm going to give you something you need. What are we doing with them? I think we need two minds because I think sometimes we're out of our mind. I, I've been to institutions before and what happened is, right, so you, I've become zombies. I mean, those beat me to the point where I could not think, I could not see. My friend, it's been bad, it's been bad. And so I, I couldn't even communicate, I couldn't talk. I didn't talk for three months. I was in, living there the first one I was in. I was in there for three months and I didn't even know I was in there for three months. And I could not talk. I just couldn't speak, I, I couldn't. But what makes you come back? I mean, she gonna tell me I'm nothing. Every day, you're nothing. I hate you. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna break down your spirit. Nothing. And you're nothing. You're nothing. You can't sing. Ew. Nobody wants to talk to you. No. You're nothing. Okay. But leave, leaving that alone, because that, that's not true. But what is true is my mind shut down. And to be honest with you, I think it shut down to protect me. This is what I'm saying. Stay with me. Forget what she said. Anybody can say anything that can make your mind shut down. That's why you, you gotta be careful with kids, you know? But whatever. Imagine if we have that outer shell, right? It's like an egg. So that the outer shell is called the, your mind. But inside of it is called the mind will emotions. So let's picture like the egg, right? The shell, the white part, and the yellow part. It's three, it's composite three. There's so many places where we see the trinity. It's crazy. But you have the mind will emotions inside of the egg, and you have the egg as the mind. If that's the case, then when my inner mind breaks down because she said something crazy to me, could it be that my outer mind comes out of dormancy and slowly starts to build me up again? We give credit to the doctors, and I mean there are great doctors out there. Kurt is an excellent doctor. Fantastic. Stands on the word. Fantastic. 
but can he rebuild me? Can he fix me? Can he, can he keep me together? Can he change my life? Can he uh, 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 bring me back to a better state of mind? Who I pray to Kirk? Oh, you better stop that. I never would. It's Kirk my God. I think some of us, when we go through things, that, that outer shell of the mind is there to house the mind, will, and emotion. So that way, when someone breaks through our mind, I'm not still sitting in the hospital, rocking back and forth, holding my knees like it was when I went in. My mind is not broken. I'm broken. But my mind sees, as long as sees a better day coming. I think Samson's mind was broken. So long. Uh, The reason why I say Samson's mind was broken is because of his story. Samson had anoint, uh, anointed that a lot of people don't, in the body, in the body and house of faith, do not receive. His, his anointing was not his strength. His anointing was the fact that he was born a judge. A lot of people, a lot of us skip past it. He was born a judge of Judah. So I don't know what line he came into. And what line when he died, right? Because he did not have children. What line did he, when he died, um, was he a part of? I don't know what happened, right? I know from Judah to Jesus, right? There's a Judah to Jesus, there's a straight line. I don't know if Samuel was one that the line passed through. Because he has children, I really don't think so. Either way, the Bible says he was a judge of Judah. And the Bible also says when he left from the Philistine camp the first time and said I'm going to turn over leaf. When he left from the Philistine camp the first time, right, he went to live on top of the hill in Judah and he worked as a judge. But he wasn't satisfied. Before Samson was born, right, his family was told um, do not give him any alcohol to drink or any and uh, don't let him um, Cut his hair. And the odd thing about that, uh, Lois picked up on that, and my grandmother picked up on that, and I was apparently chosen child, and I was not to cut my hair or drink alcohol ever, and I was told that by my grandmother and Lois, uh, who were both uh, raging and raving alcoholics. Now, um, but I was special. Nobody else in my family was told that. And they told me a separate time. So I doubt, the way my family set up, it's not like, the, I remember Lois told me, she would tell me all the time she was um, washing my hair. I doubt that Lois would tell gra um, grandma to tell me at the time grandma told me. From the moment I got saved, they both laid it out. You can't drink or cut your hair. I didn't know that that was a Nazarite vow. I did not know anything about it, but when I saw it in the Bible, it kind of blew my mind. I said, wait a minute, it really is biblical. It really is a thing. I just have no desire, right, to, to drink alcohol, and I definitely don't have any desire to cut my hair. I don't need to. My pastor's okay with it, so if anybody else has a problem with it, it's their problem, not mine. Remember, we don't, queens don't step into other people's storms. And it does, never rains in the, temp, uh, the penthouse. Therefore, if you have a rainy situation that deals with my hair, it is not my situation, it is yours. That is your rain. I'm in the penthouse. See how that works? Your rain, my penthouse, your storm, my penthouse. We don't, we, we never meet. Sam had the, the same thing. Because he was identified, his anointed was identified by the oath that they had taken for him. And that was the issue. Lois could not have me, so Lois went to the church for three years. She laid on top of the altar. They gave her keys because they got, they got sick of coming and opening the door for her. For three years, Grandma said Lois opened up the church doors for everybody else. She had keys. For three years, she laid on the altar asking God to send me. But she didn't lay on the altar asking God to send me because she wanted me. She laid on the altar asking God to send me because she James wanted me to come. He didn't want me either. Once she had me, once I came, Lois came home to, and opened the door. Tasha said, give me my baby. Tasha was four. She said, give me my baby. Lois gave me to Tasha. And from that point on, Tasha has been a better mother to me than 
Lois has ever been. I didn't know that story. I just never talked to Lois because Tasha was there. Now, she didn't want me. But this is what happens when you take an oath based on, right? You take an oath uh, based on um, something for somebody else. I mean, she worked, uh, she worked, uh, she worked to get, and I don't understand what was in her head to make her think, right? Come home, right? And every day, all day, go to church and pray for that baby to come. If the baby is not coming, you gotta stop and ask yourself something. But, if I, but with them, the, the, the baby, the baby came. And as the baby little life, he grew up, his hair grew, and they told him you have a Nazarite to uh, bow on you. The angel told them not to um, cut his hair and also to make sure he didn't drink strong drink or a, a, a drink from the vine, right? The angel told them that. I don't know that little secret from an angel. Either way, right, it's a nice dedication. So anyway, Samson goes on to live his life. Samson ends up meeting a woman. He said, I want that woman. His parents said, no, there are plenty of Israelite women here. Pick some from someone in your own uh, people. He said, I want that woman. I want to marry her. Set it up. So they had to set it up. They had to set up his wedding. And they did. And when they set up the wedding, he married her. Except that. judge of Judah and the strongest judge and the people the Philistine people did not want him so it just so happened that there was this whole confusing uh, rigmarole charade and as a result of this his wife and her family ends up being killed by their own people I said, what happens when we tie tails together? What happens when we outside? When, when the people are inside a church, it's just something that person standing outside, and I can't, I'm walking down the hallway, I'm praying, and because I'm walking down the hallway, they say, oh, you look wild today. I said, yep, that's me, that's me, I'm wild. I kept going. You're outside tying tails. You're doing things that does not matter. You're not sowing into the kingdom, and God hears everything you're saying. God hears what we say to ourselves. What happens, right? When we went we out while the service was going on, and David Lewis was up there singing, and we and I'm in the hallway walking and praying. And you outside tying tails. When we tie tails together, people's lives die. People's lives end. People's lives end. You, that's just the beginning of the death. It's the beginning of the death, the beginning of the end. Cause my thing that's bread, that is grain, and, and the, the people of Israel could have benefited from that. They could have eaten the food of it. They could have gotten bread off of it instead of Sam, Samson making them a sandwich, right? To, uh, taking it to his people. What he did is he set the fire to tails, and he released the tails into the fire of the grain. Oddly enough, there was a lot of grain. It was a Philistine grain. How many foxes had the doctor you to do that? It probably would have made the same statement if you had drugged some uh, gasoline or whatever they have gasoline back then or something. Drug some, uh, flick the bait on the fire, right? And set the grain on fire yourself. They had ways to do it. And how we know they have ways to do it is because Absalom set Joab uh, grain on fire to get them to come to him. So they have ways. They have ways of setting things on fire. And all he had to do is flick a bit, right? Why did you have to kill all those foxes to do it? He wanted to be very creative because what he did was he tied the fox's tails together so they could not get away from each other, right? Your tail has been tied to me. You are tied to me at the tail, right? And somebody set our tails on fire. Now here's the thing, right? It's a bad thing in this instance because he tied the tails together so they could not get away from each other. So they were mingling in the fire, trying to get away and rolling around trying to release the fire on their tails. It was a creative way to destroy, creative destruction. It's a creative way to destroy. Matthew 18, 20, when two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. You are creating creative destruction because you know your TV shouldn't be on. Not loud enough for me to hear it. Why didn't you just take one box and, 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 and set fire to that cell? 
A man had made the big destruction, right? So I need to take a bunch of foxes and set fire to the, fire to the tails. So that way they could eventually go and, and release themselves. No, he wanted the whole grain um, barn, the whole grain uh, field to burn up. He wanted to destroy their bread. He made it so that they couldn't get word. And that's the same thing we do. No, it's not okay for you to tie, do one tail. You have to tie all the tails together, set, or set them on fire, and watch them run through the grain. But how horrifying it must have been to hear foxes screaming. And for you to run into the grain and try to figure out why they are screaming, and you cannot untie the tail because fire has been set to it. So that fox, whether it knew it or not, was doomed to die. And what do we do about it? We giggle and laugh. His wife, she was Philistine. Um, that says a woman from Timnah. Doesn't even give her a name. And the horrible thing about it is you think, okay, what was her name? Oh, it doesn't give her a name, then she must not have been important. So she was very important. What with, with, with the woman of Timna, when I hear woman of Timna, right, when I hear the woman of it shows me that there were multiple women. She was very important, but she stood as a, a, a symbol, an emblem. This one woman was with him, he was with her, but this one woman died because of him, because of his actions. So this man was going across the town, taking all of these women, right? So grandma looked at me one day, and I was six years old. Samantha was on a bed, she changed Samantha's diaper, and grandma looked at me and said, ooh, Jamie's gonna be pretty, but Samantha? Samantha's a fox. Now, I didn't know much about foxes. I didn't know much about what, what pretty meant, you know? But since I didn't, I didn't know much about foxes, I thought Samantha was a weird looking baby. I thought she was really fat. But I thought to myself, I want to be a fox too. I know what a fox look like, but I said I want to be a fox too. Jamie's gonna be pretty, but Samantha's gonna be a fox. Saul has killed his tens of thousands, but David his tens of thousands. You set fire to the fields of grain, to word of God and people. Fields of grain when you open up your mouth out of turn. Grandma had no way of knowing. Grandma was saved then, but Grandma had no way of knowing that what she said would stick with me the way it did. And I told Samantha, Samantha no she didn't. I said, Samantha, you were zero years. How do you know? Shut up. You can even sit up. You can even change your own pamper. You weren't professional. You weren't professional. I know what I heard. Jamie's gonna be pretty, but Samantha's gonna be a fox. Him tying these tails together, was he just killing foxes? Beautiful women, just foxes, foxes, foxes. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. You can hear the inflection in somebody's voice. I don't have to know what a fox is or know that a fox is beautiful. I remember thinking to myself, what is a fox? I want to be a fox. I remember thinking that at six. What is a fox? I want to be a fox. I had no idea. I'm telling you that about, and that makes me feel kind of dumb, but I just had no idea. It makes you feel dumb for being that young and thinking I want to be that, even though I did not know what that was. That's one fox. Samantha's one fox. And grandma wasn't wrong. Samantha's gorgeous. That's one thing, I will never touch Samantha's beauty. Never. I will never be as beautiful as she is. And everybody says she looks exactly like me. And when I look at pictures, I've had, I've had my hair a certain way, and she's, done, she's had pic pictures with her hair the exact same way. I look at them and I'm like, wow, she does look exactly like me. But she is so much more beautiful. There's something about her. There's an essence about Samantha that makes her a fox. It makes her beautiful. It makes her elusive. It makes men that um, men women want to be her and men want to be around. Let's say around her, right? There's something about you that 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 makes people want to be with you, or be like you, or be around you, or talk to you. There's something about you that makes you elusive because even though they want to be like you, they can never reach the state of you. 
And so as I get angry at people, I'm always aware of that because I say, wait a minute, I don't know what they're thinking about themselves. And though I'm saying, I'm mad at you for having your TV on and I'm thinking about how strong, how, I, that's one thing I say, that's one strong and powerful. Even though they had this illness, they are surrounded, literally surrounded. God is like sending people with that same illness to them for them to witness to. And they're thinking of ways to annoy people by doing stupid things when they come to church and when they get on the prayer call. They look for ways. I'm saying, you're so fantastic. God wants to use you. What is wrong? I'm telling that person for two years. What is wrong with you? You're so awesome. You're tying your tail. And what they will do is, because they cannot get me, because I'm in a penthouse, uh, they cannot get me to join their storm. What they do is they go to different people and try to tie their tail to other people. And Ms. Carol said, stop pouring into them. Because when you pour into them, you are pouring water into a empty bucket. You are pouring into the storm. It's raining in their life. It's pouring in their life. Sometimes because they will not turn to God. And other times because of the fact that they, 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 don't, they like rain. They like pity cup, pity cup, where are you? Pity cup, pity cup, I need you. They want something to put in their cup, so they want rain water. To so stand out in the rain. In their rain. But God never rains in your rain. So I can't come in your rain. But they want you, they, they, they try to other, to other people's tails, uh, as, as beautiful as they are, they will have that fox tail, then they will tie their tails to other, uh, to other foxes. And God told me at one point, he said, Jenny, foxes are not my family. They're scavengers. He said, he's saying now they're scavengers. They're sneaky, they're stealthy, and they'll do whatever they have to do to get what they want. They are pretty. They may be pretty, right? But so are aspen trees. You want to be like that too? I'm just as round like a sheep. But I belong with sheep. Stand beneath the shepherd. That's what I do. I got Jesus my shepherd and I got my pastor as my shepherd. And I sit right on his foot and ride his foot wherever he go. That's it. But Samson as a judge took these foxes tails and tied them together, ensuring that the foxes would die. So not only would they have to clean the, that, that spot where the grain was, but any part of the grain that was left, they could not eat it. Why? Because they had fox carcass inside of it. There's no way they could have saved those foxes. They were tied together with fire. Hmm. The enemy always wants to tie us together with fire. He wants to tie us together and it set fire to us. He wants us to die creatively. And we let him do it. After Samson did this abominable thing, the people of that town started to ask the question. They said, who is this? Somebody said, Samson. Why did he do this? Because the wife remarried after Samson walked out on her. This is the first wife, not the second one. The wife remarried after Samson walked out on her during their wedding. And if, she had, if he had listened, she was telling him, she was trying to tell him that they were trying to kill her. They threatened to kill her and her family. But he walked out in anger. Whenever you're angry, and whenever you do stuff in anger, you could be angry, but whenever you do things in anger, you lose your breastplate. You lose your righteousness. Because God's, God, like Pastor David gave me that scripture, God does not, God's righteousness, does, uh, uh, anger does not produce the righteousness of God. You lose your righteousness. You lose your breastplate. And if you lose your breastplate, what happens? You are open field. Your chest and torso is open. You are open field for the enemy to shoot you. So uh, Samson is tying, uh, tying tails. You're lying. Tying tails. Why well, he's tying tails together and solidifying his lies by, by setting fire to him. While he's doing that, Why don't I say while he's doing that? Because while the field, while the grain was burning, Samson went to talk to someone, right, and said, whose house is that? And he said, it's your wife's. He said, you set the house on fire? He said, they set the house on fire because you did this. 
the, 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 the chief, whatever that was, the elders, whatever, wanted to know who, why the field was burning. If everybody's brain was in that field, apparently. They were all connected to it. So whoever's field was, um, that was causing that fire, they put it out by setting her house on fire. They gonna answer with a higher fire. So now Samson, after beating those men, getting the outfits, now Samson has to beat uh, somebody else down. Because you operate in anger. And they're going to drive you to keep answering every question, right? And every question I was presented with this morning, right? I had to answer in anger. And I said, God, I'm tired of this. So to mute a conversation, put up a conversation on mute. And the other conversation I had to mute in my head. And just stop answering. Because if I find myself answering in anger, I won't be able to stop. Answering in anger. The more things they say to you, the more you answer in anger. When you're angry, nothing ever calms down. It never, it never dissipates. You have to change the way you're answering. I've done it even with people on the phone. Change the way I'm thinking while they're talking. You know what? It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It, let's, let's work this out. Calm myself down and change the way I'm responding. And when I change the way I'm responding, more often than not, I'll change the way they're responding. Because anger only fuels anger. It's a fire on top of fire type thing. And you get nowhere. After Samson's whole original family died the first time, this is Philistine people that killed their own people to answer what the Israelite did. So his original would-be family died the first time. He went back, sat as a judge on the top of the hill in Judah, and judged the people, I think they said, for nine years. I think they said for nine years. Got up some size and went back to the Philistine. And under the dark of night, was going in to see Delilah, but he had no intentions of marrying her. This is why I say insanity became insanity. Because he put a sanity inside of himself. So this is why I said it became insanity. Every time he told his wife, he said, oh, he said, she said, what's the secret of your strength? He said, oh, you tie me up with new ropes. So she tied him up with new ropes. Then she called the Philistines. Samson, the Philistines are upon you. So Phil starts rushing and he would break the rope and, and start beating him. If a hair is tied to a weaving loom, it just, at one point he starts to talk about things with his hair. So I felt, mm-mm, he's, he's on dangerous ground. And every time I tell you something, I turn around and it happens. Every time I tell you I'm afraid of uh, that, that, that if this happens to me, I will be destroyed. She said, what's the secret of your strength? He said, I will, if you do this to me, I will be destroyed. The next thing you know, she had done it. And she'd always say the same thing. Satan, the Philistines are upon you. How many times does the Philistines have to be upon you? How many times do the Philistines have to be upon you for you to see that this woman is crazy? If you give me a peanut butter jelly sandwich, she could have feed you the sandwich and smush the peanut butter jelly in your face. That didn't actually happen, but might as well have. Satan, the Philistines are upon you. And when you read it in the word, she says the exact same thing every single time. And then gets mad when it doesn't work out. After she be he beats the filth sign, why do you keep lying to me? Why do you keep telling me these things are, will break your strength and they don't? My next question would be, follow-up question, why do you keep asking me for the source of my strength? Why are you so intent on getting my secret? So he finally tells her his secret. He finally tells her what he should not have told her. He finally tells her what she needs to know, what she wants to know. And Samson is sold to the Philistines for the same cost that Jesus was sold to Judas. Watch out for people that feign love but ask the wrong questions. Make sure when you are looking for your mates, or make sure when you're looking for someone, or make sure you're looking for a friend, you look for people that ask the right questions. They shouldn't be asking, what's the one thing that you are allergic to? I'm a nurse, do you know what succinyl codeine is? Basically, 
people say, how would you feel if I killed you? Sex with a cold wind will cause your body to paralyze from the inside out. I just know stuff. You hear somebody say, I got my hands on some stuff with a cold wind coating? Leave them alone. That's them saying, Jamie, the cell signs are upon you! If each time the cell signs came in and they were upon me, you can't do nothing to fight them off. The scream every time. Every time the cell come in, they come in the same way, but they leave, they flee. Whichever way they could go, seven different ways, whichever way they go, because I beat them out of the house. But they come in the same way each time. It's because they come in the same way each time. Why don't you have like a mousetrap or something next to the door? I know women weren't supposed to do much. They weren't supposed to think or anything like that. But you ain't trying to do nothing. Samson, the cell signs are upon you! He was insane. He lost his sanity. Doing the same thing, expecting a different result. And then he lost his eye. But wait, he didn't lose nothing. Because he could not see. Delilah was the snake and she was right in front of him. When you lose your eyes and, you don't, and you're not trying to, uh, when you lose what you are not trying to use anyway, I have no pity. question. Close your eyes. Now open them real fast. What do you see? 